So welcome to this uh, second lecture in the fifth theme uh, on architecture tactics in 2db604. Uh, in this uh, lecture, we, we will have a closer look at the Jeff Sorrento case study and see how tactics can, can play a role in, in the architecture design activity. So, as you remember, Jed's rental is about uh, Jed was a, a rental company, and now finally he decided to, to put his business uh, online, which means that there should be a, a web uh, store uh, where uh, users can, can make reservations uh, for rentals and, and manage their accounts, etc. Um, there is a uh, description here. Offered from Ed, uh, Edward Brown, and we can we can read more of the details uh, in the case here. What's important is that um, one of the uh, stakeholders here is uh, Lisa. She owns a, a rent company, and, and she has a, a well couple of concerns that uh, she would like the the, the system to to. Uh, to address, and uh, one of the more important ones is, is this one that she needs quick responses because uh, she uses she will use the the uh, uh, online uh, access to to Jed's rental while planning with her customers. So so uh, she is dependent on on uh, timely timely updates and and, and quick responses. Uh, so let's have a look at this this concern here and and uh, see what uh, the uh, developers can 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 do with that. Well, now okay, we have the architect here, and and then we have uh, Lisa's performance concern, and one of the more important steps here is of course in the beginning to to uh, express the concern as as a set of architectural significant requirements. So we get some details about uh, what the system uh, should achieve. Then the architect will take these uh, requirements and start to look for options. And the options can be found in, in the knowledge base, which is uh, partly the architect's own experience, patterns, tactics, and reference architectures, and, and also, of course, other systems. We've seen this before. Based on the options and the ASR, the uh, architect will now start to make decisions. And eventually these decisions are documented in, in, in views, in this case a view for, for uh, performance. So um, if you look at architecture design, well, now with a focus on tactics and patterns, the decisions the architect makes with respect to performance will form a strategy, an architecture strategy for performance. And this strategy is then what you document in, in your view. Just to recap, uh, our, uh, software tactic, uh, plausible solution. So a uh, solution that describes a mechanism, which is structure and behavior, uh, that address uh, a certain quality at attribute. So it's a mechanism uh, which makes a system uh, that enables the system to achieve certain certain quality attributes. Um, this is also, you see that the strategy is formed by tactics uh, and patterns organizes, uh, organize pa tactics. So, so a combination of tactics and patterns uh, form uh, forms the strategy uh, that address the the, uh, the the concern and the ASRs in that concern. So if we look at, at uh, performance tactics, and now we have to, to uh, bring in our development team, or at least a couple of, of the guys in the team here. Uh, performance tactics uh, control performance in an application. Uh, and that is that certain events arrive and, and then the response uh, to these uh, events are uh, 
within certain time constraints. So there is a time aspect here, which means that if an event arrives, there is some processing in the system, and this process is, uh, processing has an upper bound on certain uh, uh, attributes, for instance, response time or, or uh, number of responses per number of uh, requests per second, etc. Uh, that, that the system can process. So there are a lot of performance uh, constraints that, that the system should meet. There are various tactics available. Uh, one is to focus on, on the resource demand. That is that you should actually limit the demand for system resources. And you can, of course, do that by, by controlling the number of events, the complexity of the events, the complexity of the processing, et cetera, et cetera. We can also uh, manage resources to make sure that, well, we have more resources available. And, and, and there are different uh, tactics to achieve that as well. And the third one is resource arbitration, which is more or less make sure that you use your resources here as efficient as possible. Um, and and uh, we will have a look at, at some tactics for that too. But resource demand, uh, well, carefully manage the demand for resources. Because if you have the, the, the weights here, if, if you have a situation where the, the number of events that arrive uh, to the system uh, uh, is requiring too many resources, well, uh, you will have a situation where, where the, the performance tips so on the negative side, that, that you actually have a system that uh, can't deliver uh, in accordance with the time constraints, or, well, sometimes even can't deliver at all. Um, so what you would like to... to, to uh, achieve here is a situation where, where this black weight here is, is smaller and the, the uh, board here tips over to the side where we actually have more resources uh, than required or at least a balanced situation where you have uh, well a balanced uh, you, where you have balanced your, your uh, available resources with the uh, demand. So uh, uh, what you can do here is that you can, you can work with the number of jobs or the job sizes. That is, well, the events that comes into, uh, uh, enters the system uh, and requires processing. Uh, you can also uh, restrict the time for, for processing uh, and set an upper bound, which means that a processing a job should not or is not allowed to take more than a certain well, time. Uh, other tactics is to, to make the, the uh, actual processing more efficient, so you reduce overhead. It could mean, well, I I communication, for instance, is, is uh, overhead, or uh, so, so you can limit communication, uh, or you can increase efficiency. You can, you can come up with a smarter algorithm with, with uh, a less complex uh, algorithm that, that scales better, etc. Uh, you can also manage your, your resources. Uh, and and the, the, the most basic one is, of course, to, to just increase the resources you have. So add more memory, add more servers, add more uh, uh, disk sp uh, space, etc., etc. Add caches, well, lots of things you can do here. Uh, you can also, uh, if you think that that uh, data access is a problem you can you can uh, create multiple copies of data you can use different grain techniques for that or you can you can have uh, uh, parallel uh, data storages where, where you have well a, a, a similar to a load balancer that can 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 uh, direct the data accesses to, to various uh, data servers uh, multiple copies of computation. You saw an example of that in the, the lecture on architecture tactics where you have a, a, a load balancer that, that uh, uh, distributes the workload on several servers in a system. Um, 
you can also have concurrency and, and you can you can set upper bound on queue sizes these are to some extent uh, connected to, to multiple copies of, 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 of computation uh, but at the bottom the bottom line here is that you should actually uh, maximize the, the available resources uh, and and well Sometimes, well, just increasing the resources is, is, is feasible. Sometimes it's not. It could be that you have constraints that, that uh, uh, restricts how much uh, hardware costs you can, fixed cost you can, you, can, uh, you can have for your system. The same here, if you have multiple copies of computation, uh, how far can you, can you scale, uh, et cetera, et cetera. So, so uh, several of these tactics in here uh, rather straightforward however you have to, to consider them in, in a context with with constraints and of course other tactics the third uh, is resource arbitration and what it's all about is really that well we use an illustration up here and you see the the, the black circle that circulates around here imagine now that the the yellow uh, uh, blobs here and on the outside represents uh, computations and these computations require access to a, some shared data here in the middle okay uh, but now the system can access can allow uh, simultaneous access for these processes so instead there is a scheduler and and this black circle here illustrates the time unit when a process can access the shared resources so what we have here is a, a fair uh, arbitration uh, scheduling policy wh which allows each and every process uh, the same time to access data uh, there are of course other options you can have uh, different priorities you can have uh, uh, other types of, of, of schedulers here uh, that take uh, more context into account when they allocate access to, to the shared resources. Uh, what you have here is, is, is an example of what you see in any modern operating system where you have shared resources like uh, the processor for instance, well uh, you have processes that, that execute on the processor uh, and, and uh, well they can't do it simultaneously but they have uh, a time slot that gives them a, a some time unit um, regularly to, to, to execute. So three tactics. Uh, so now our development team, they know a little bit about what they have at hand. And, and now, okay, Jed is, is uh, thinking about uh, putting his, his rental store online and well, the, the, the team here, they immediately think about, okay, we have the clients here, we have uh, desktop clients, we have web clients, we have apps uh, connected to the internet, and then, well, in order to, to make sure that we have the performance, well, uh, we probably should stack up with some servers here to have multiple uh, copies of computation. However, we need some kind of load balancer in between to, to uh, distribute uh, the load uh, fairly on, on, onto these servers. So hmm, here's a tactic, okay. Uh, now the team has a, at least an idea for a strategy for how to manage performance. Uh, and they can move on and they can have a look at the options for the load balancer. Uh, I don't think that uh, Jed's uh, application will uh, create uh, too much load, so maybe an active-passive would be good enough. They don't need to go for an active-active, however, uh, could be. So, so what's important here is that, that well, the team, they take the, the uh, alternatives into account, and, and, well, if they go for a... a uh, uh, load balancing tactic, well, they have multiple copies of computation. It allows for some sort of concurrency because each server can process uh, requests from the clients. It will increase the resources available. Each and every server you add will add some resources. 
and you can also have multiple copies of data. Um, this uh, could create a problem, of course, because you need to, to uh, make sure that you have uh, data consistency if you, if you have multiple copies of data. We will not look into to that problem more. But in principle, when it comes to, to tactics, well, you need to support them uh, with some kind of uh, structure for how, how to organize your, your, the architecture elements. And if you look at patterns for performance, well, client server is an alternative. We've seen that before, but you could also imagine to have a peer-to-peer -peer solution. A peer-to-peer -peer solution is when, when you have a number of peers which has similar responsibilities in, in, a, uh, uh, in a system. And, and you can actually achieve multiple copies of computation, concurrency, increase resources, and also have multiple copies of data using peer-to-peer. -peer. So, so even though the, the team here uh, probably decided on, on, on a load balancer approach with client server, let's have a look at this alternative uh, pattern. So a peer-to-peer -peer in principle is a, uh, an approach where you uh, combine uh, a server aspect with a client aspect and a load balancer. And if you have a, a large number of peers, they share the responsibility for the computation, they share the responsibility for storing data and also for, for, for balancing the load. Uh, I think that several of you have, have experience from from peer-to-peer -peer in, for instance, uh, file sharing applications. So this is definitely an alternative that, that the team could consider. Uh, however, I think that in this context where you have Jeb's uh, rental, uh, customers, for instance, Lisa, would not be interested to, to run a uh, a, a, a peer application on her tablet, for instance, and, and have her data shared uh, onto, on other unknown uh, uh, peers. So, so I think that, that the team will, will quickly uh, rule this uh, pattern out as, as uh, not applicable in this context. So, what they do is that they, well, they go for this and, and the pattern is a client server pattern. So developing a strategy for performance means that, that the team has to pick tactics and, and organize them by patterns. Uh, we just had a look at the, the uh, high level here with clients and servers. We didn't look at anything, any uh, look at all into the, to the load balancing. And, and of course, when developing a strategy, we need to provide much more information than, than just the, the high level um, uh, models that, that we have shown in this presentation. So, so the idea here is that you develop a strategy uh, that provides a design that, well, achieve achieves the architecture significant requirements that comes from the concern. So, so uh, for instance here, well, you have tactics like multiple copies of computation, concurrency, increased resources, multiple copies of data. We had a look at two patterns, but we ruled the peer-to-peer -peer out because, well, in this application, it's not uh, the best choice. Instead, we go for a client server. So at the end of the day, the team uh, will propose this strategy. Uh, they can present it to Jed. They can uh, motivate why it will uh, balance uh, the load and, and provide performance guarantees in the system. Uh, what remains now is, of course, to, to get in uh, here and, and describe the details. Uh, for instance, the dynamics of the load balancer and if you have any other tactics that, that you use uh, that uh, is concerned with the performance of a system. So um, that was the second and the final uh, uh, lecture on, on architecture tactics. And now it's time to move on to the sixth theme, uh, the 
which is architecture receive.